Let's start off with a simple question. Is the Earth the center of our universe? Now, you all probably think I'm crazy, but humor me. We obviously know that the Earth does not revolve around the sun. The sun does not revolve around the Earth. How could that be possible? But back in the 1600s, everyone thought that the Earth was actually the center of our universe. Back then, Chao Chu was viewed as punishable by imprisonment or even death. But the great Galileo Galilei proved that the Earth is actually the center of the universe. And thanks to his courage, we've been able to learn much more about our solar system. Now, another question. Is the Earth flat? Yes. <laughs> well, believe it or not, the answer is actually no. Settle down now. I know this may come as a shock for a lot of you. The Earth is in fact round, and there are many groups from physics and astronomy to support this, such as gravity and different constellations in different parts of the world. It's kind of a problem that 66% of American millennials know that the Earth is round. So, what do these two examples have in common? They both show how astronomical ideas have been changed throughout time. This has been happening since the time humans could view the sky, the beginning of human history. With new technology, different questions have arise about space, space exploration, its implications, and much more. As I said before, the Earth is thought to be the center of our universe. This is based on Ptolemy's model. As this here. Later, this was revised by the Copernican model, which showed the Sun as the center of our universe, and the Earth revolving around it. This was later revised by the Kepler model, which showed all the planetary orbits slightly elliptical. This revision of planetary models was only possible with better technology. Today, we have satellites and spaceships to view planetary movements firsthand. As technology progressed, society's perception of space evolved. So, human, humanity has always been interested in entering space. A great example of this is the ancient Greek legend of Icarus, who flew too close to the sun out of human curiosity. Humans have finally been able to start achieving their dreams in 1957, when Russia spent, sent the first artificial satellite into space. And this gave questions to everyone. Is it right for us to explore planets and comets in space? Is it okay for us to bring resources back from space to Earth? Are we allowed to send it? humans, including adventurous tourists, into space with the chance of them not even returning? Will space imperialism just be history repeating itself, but on a much larger scale? And of course, will we find aliens? Now we don't know any ETs raiding fancy UFOs, nor do we know but if we can use the resources we find, let alone the resources we can find out there. In fact, we don't have the answers to any of these questions. This lack of answers introduces the controversy behind space travel. And this is only powered by people's conflicting opinions about how to deal with the great beyond. As we all learned in school, in 1969, in 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on the moon in the Apollo 11 mission. And we have a lot of proof to support this, such as hundreds of photos, hours and hours of video and audio recordings, and even physical rock samples from the moon. We even have footprints on the moon, which will last for another million years because of the life in the atmosphere. But still, even with all this, people think that the moon and the human occur. Why would they think such a thing? In 1971, the James Bond movie had a few comedic lines about the moon landing. Later, other documentaries and um, shows were created just to disprove the moon landing. Pop culture pushed towards the habit of posters to opposing this theory. So why do people believe that the moon landing didn't occur? After analyzing some photos like this, people noted there are no stars in the background here. Surely this must mean that the moon landing was staged, right? No. NASA always conducted the lunar landing missions during the daytime. So, in the daytime, the sun, 
Sunlight on the moon was too bright for cameras to register the stars in the background. So it seemed like there were no stars in the background. Another argument is that there seems to be an imprint of a sea on some of the lunar rocks. This could be that they're movie props, maybe. But no, this is probably just a strand of loose hair in the copying process. Another argument is that this flag here seems to be fluttering. How can the flag flutter? It's on the moon. There's no wind on the moon. But NASA used a rod at the top of the moon to make it seem like the flag fluttered. All the wrinkles on the moon and on the flag are from it being crumbled up in transit for four days. This argument is backed by a lack of knowledge about lunar physics and NASA's equipment. Another argument is that the last lunar landing has been in 1972. Since then, we haven't had a single lunar landing. This could mean that maybe it didn't even happen in the first place. But no. This can be disproven by geopolitics. At the time, America was occupied by the Vietnam War. And also, we were the first to send people on the moon. That means we won the space race against the Soviets. There was no need to send more people on the moon. So all these arguments have been disproven by logic, astronomy, and physics. In this case, it shows that this is another example of how society's views can be so radically different about a single topic. In this specific example, NASA could not, dis NASA could not convince everyone in the 50 years they had that the lunar landing actually occurred. Another way to think about space Perspective is the literal perspective of humans changing when looking back at Earth. This is known as the overview effect. Looking back at Earth from space can actually be a psychological effect. From space, when, you, when astronauts look back at Earth, they don't see national borders or violence. They just see one world. Astronauts have been known to stop identifying with nationalities or cultures. Because in space, they they gain a sense of self they gain a vision of a united world, a big picture of life on Earth. From up in space, looking back at Earth, they can't see civil war that tear nations apart, and fierce battles where it's all peaceful men, because these all seem inconsequential. Edgar Mitchell is unknown to have said that he felt a certain connectedness with everyone on Earth. When space agencies send astronauts to Earth to space, they're sending missions regarding satellites and moons and stars. But when they look back at us, they gain a sense of self-awareness. This self-awareness is used later in the, upon returning back to Earth, when they engage in philanthropic activities and write books about unity. Ron Garrett is said to have experienced the orbital perspective, which is, in which he said that Earth is just a blue orb in a vast, void of blackness. This orb seemed like a paradise, but in reality, Earth has many problems. Millions suffering from racial injustice everywhere. Millions without access to clean water. And millions hindered from success due to poverty. The impact space has had on humanity throughout time is undeniable. From a broad point of knowledge, to space controversies, to the overall perspective of humanity changing from space. People have been influenced forever. Who knows how we can be influenced by just trying to understand the mysteries behind the great beyond. Thank you.